Welcome to another edition of TechCast. Our guest today is Wasim Hashim, go to market lead and AI business strategy lead also at Microsoft UAE. Welcome Wasim. Thank you very much and thanks for having me. Pleasure. Wasim, can you just introduce uh, or tell us a little more about yourself and your role in the company? Absolutely. So I'm the go to market strategy uh, uh, specialist for uh, Microsoft. Right. I work out of the uh, uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa office and I look after the business strategy and execution for Microsoft in the right. Middle East, specifically right. in the area or generative right. AI space. Right. Um, now, to put it in the context of Jitex, what is uh, Microsoft uh, showcasing at Jitex and what is the spotlight here? So, Jitex is a very exciting time for us, as, as you can imagine, especially in the era of AI. Uh, this is where we showcase um, the top innovations and the latest in the market, uh, right. given that Microsoft is a leader in the AI space. And this year is, is very special because we are showing the second or third fold of the AI in the workplace, which right. is the agentic AI mm. uh, era. We've seen AI unfold since its inception, kind of right. three years ago with the generative AI. And we've seen it now reach uh, a place where agentic AI is spoken of in every media and every space. What we're showcasing here as like our hero um, demo is three or four different agents, right. AI agents acting autonomously as independent um, consultants, may, if I may say, for the government leaders. Right. One in the financial space, one is the operational space and so on. And they are more like a board advisors or advisors and consultants, right. part of the board. Mm -hmm where they get to contribute um, to the leadership when, whenever there's a research or, or, or what if scenarios that need to be done. Right. And it demonstrates what Microsoft called the third fold of the agentic AI uh, era for the organizations, what we call um, frontier organizations. This is where agents work hand in hand with humans right. and not only as a, a personal assistant or AI support kind of mm. role. Right. Now let's talk about the UAE market. Uh, how important or how relevant is this market for Microsoft? And also tell us about some of the opportunities and challenges that this market poses. That's a very good question. Uh, the UAE is a, is a focused market for Microsoft, uh, given few factors. First of all, the uh, vision of the UAE and the government and the leadership of the UAE of having this country not only become one of the top countries as a consumer for AI, but one of the top countries in generating, building, and exporting AI. Right. That vision, we, we see it unfold itself year after year. Um, just few statistics. We, we expect that the uh, AI space is gonna, going to be contributing to the GDP of the country by uh, uh, 2037, mm -hmm. something around $96 billion. That's right a little bit more than 13% of the right. country's GDP. Right. Uh, that basically made Microsoft a partner to the government and the leadership of the UAE. And we, we announced several uh, times um, our innovations in the AI space, one of which is data centers that we delivered on in, in Abu Dhabi and, and Dubai. That's right. state-of-the-art data centers that were uh, built a few years ago. Uh, just yesterday, we made a very exciting announcement that co-pilot data processing is brought into hmm. the country and this is basically to allow even the most regulated industries such as the federal government and some of the government sectors in the UAE to be on AI okay. and that demonstrate not only private sector but also the public sector are accelerating toward hmm. the vision of 3031 in, in the country. One other thing that Microsoft is doing there in, in the market to help with that acceleration is the skilling. Mm. Microsoft have committed to upskilling 100,000 government employees in AI right. and roughly around 1 million residents uh, as well in that space. Absolutely. Now, let's, let's come to local data centers. You mentioned that in your uh, response just now as well. What, are the, what is the role of local data centers in driving productivity and collaboration beyond automation and, um, co and collaboration? Well, several factors. First of all, uh, given the leadership role in, in the UAE and how AI is, is, is very right. much 
part of the fabric of the strategy in the country, uh, the government or the public sector and the re highly regulated uh, sectors are not lagging behind mm. thanks to having a local data center that can provide that level of sovereignty for data residency and data processing. Right. The other thing, given the, the mass scale of AI adoption in the country, you would be expecting a higher uh, uh, latency and higher execution. And that can happen when you have processing that happen in country rather than traveling around the world. So these are the, the initial things that you can look into when, uh, mm. when we assess the role of data center or local pro uh, data mm. centers in, in the UAE. The other thing also, it helps with um, refreshing the regulations and the policies so that we can, or the government can, uh, foster innovation without compromising in data security, privacy, and, and sovereignty. Correct. So. correct. Uh, now, about the AI strategy itself, what is Microsoft's uh, sort of focus going to be going forward for this market, at least as far as AI is concerned, considering that AI is exploding and accelerating, and given the unique nature of this market, what is your focus going to be? So, one of the things we learned this year is that AI is out of the lab. Right. It's no longer in this experimental phase. Mm. We've mm. seen broad adoption across the board, public sector, private sector, startups even. Right. I spoke in a startup uh, event uh, a few weeks ago in the IFC, and I was shocked by the amount of startups that are coming with ideas about AI right. or how they're leveraging AI to build their organizations or the small businesses. Right. So we see the expansion now in adoption, and this is what we call the frontier organization, where we see companies adopting AI across the board in all their business uh, right. uh, units and business sectors, that AI becomes uh, mainstream across the board. And we see that in three folds. One fold is where AI is being used as a personal assistant, mm. and then AI is a member of the organization. And the third one is where AI is a, a strategic partner. Right. It works hand in hand in partnership with humans. And you see humans managing multiple AI agents and AI agents talk to each other as part right. of the uh, organization. Right. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, generative AI. How is generative AI transforming workplace productivity and collaboration beyond automation generally? I mean, uh, especially that's, in this market. That's a very good question because one of the challenges that we learned on early on is that adoption and change management is the hardest part of AI. It's not the technology, it's not the deployment. Right. It's figuring out how we change people's behavior to ask themselves every day, how right. can Copilot help me uh, achieve this? How can my AI tool help me achieve that? So having generative AI and getting people used to consult them and use them on daily basis helps with the adoption of AI in general. When we talk about adopting AI across the organization, one of the things we've seen organizations do or companies do is rewriting and redesigning job descriptions and roles. Right. And uh, these uh, these things require a kind of level of awareness across the organization. And that awareness only comes when people use it, understand its value, understand how they can develop themselves, how they can shift their mind and their roles, how they can expand their roles and so on. So it plays the role of educating people and helping them adopt AI for the larger tasks when AI gets into their line of business applications and everyday uh, work, including working with AI agents. Absolutely. Now, um, let's talk of Microsoft's vision for the next phase of AI going forward, particularly in this region, and also for digital transformation. What is the outlook? Well, it is going to be very close to uh, what I discussed, which is the frontier organization. Most organizations are in the first phase where employees are using AI as a personal assistant. The second phase where we start seeing the evolution of AI agents, and this is something we're seeing uh, uh, across the board, where you have AI agents that either do a tasks Mm. or execute end-to-end -end tasks for you, but like their tasks specific area specific. And the third phase, which some organizations are, are on, but it's way too early for broader adoption, mm. is the phase where you have teams made or organizations made of humans and agents working hand-in-hand. -hand. 
for example, you'd see a project manager with an AI agent specialist in finance, AI agent specialized in the project details or the RFP. These agents collaborate together and they work directly with humans and under the supervision of humans. And that's kind of the evolution of uh, AI or agentic AI in the future. Right. Well, see, we've talked a lot about AI and generative AI, but what are some of the biggest opportunities that you see in this space, in this AI technology space? Well, the largest opportunity is really for organizations that empower their employees to use it heavily. Right. Uh, demystify the concepts of AI replacing people, mm. AI replacing jobs, AI uh, 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 increasing the risk of, uh, right. of uh, data uh, leaks and, and other risks. Obviously, make no mistake, the risks are there and that's why we work heavily with companies right. to get their data in, in place, to get their security and compliance in place and, and, and follow the policies and the, uh, the, the protections that they have. But the organizations that adopt it faster and get users to use it and deploy it and get it out of experimental phase are the ones that are going to leverage uh, uh, the most economical advantage out of it. And just like I, I talk to customers all the time and I tell them, your company, your customers are expecting it, your competitors are using it and your right. employees need it and, and demand it. Right. Because now it's it's one of the reasons we've seen statistically uh, employees leave companies or mm. look for in a company that they're going to join. Because okay. when once you start using it and see the benefit that brings mm. to you, it's hard to leave that behind. So right. the opportunity really lies for the companies that leverage it all the way. Correct, correct. We could go on talking a lot about <laughs> AI. And um, I think what we've touched on some of the very important uh, points and also on Microsoft's strategy and you know, vision for AI going forward. So that was a very uh, insightful conversation. Thank you so much, Vaseem, for the time. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Vaseem. you very much. Thank you.